So, honorable dear uh, high representatives and their colleagues, thank you all, and it's a pleasure to be here today to present one of the main outputs of EPAC, the book Boosting Innovation and Cooperation in European Cancer Control, Key Findings from the European Partnership for Action Against Cancer. Many of you in this room have participated in one or more of the chapters, and it is with great pride that I can be here today along with my co-editors, uh, Tit Albert and Sandra Rados, to speak about the past year of intensive work as well as our prospects going forward. Uh, this book is just one of the many products that will come out of the EPAC initiative but I think it does capture the essence of the project, which hinge on practical innovations and cross-country collaboration. The rationale for the book sprang from the need to give prominence to innovation and cooperation in cancer control policy, with a special emphasis on European added value. Back when the book concept was defined in the fall of 2012, the EPAC steering committee and core working group felt a great need to highlight the activities as an accountability mechanism and as a way to support further action by the Commission and Member States. We decided to choose just a sample of outstanding experiences from work package activities. The idea is to show what is possible when Member States and partners come together. Departing from a format that focuses on the great need and impact of the cancer burden on European population, work package leaders were to concentrate on positive experiences so that this might be continued and expanded in future work. There were a number of limitations facing the publication process, starting but with an extremely tight schedule on top of all of our authors' already heavy workloads. Although the Commission, above all, wanted a product that showed all of, uh, or most of the concrete results of EPAC, it was a very complex goal to be fully achieved. Because drafting book uh, took place during the activities, not after and so our focus was more descriptive of the methods and processes rather than the outcomes. Moreover, there was a need to coordinate with a large array of authors and work package participants to reach consensus, this key word, starting with which of the work package activities would be chosen for a closer look. There was a risk of trying to say too much and ending up not saying anything at all. So the editorial team was adamant that work packages limit the content of their chapters. The key milestones started in September of 2012 at the string committee meeting which took place in Athens when the rationale and timeline were presented and the author list was decided. There was an author's workshop which took place in Brussels last January where all others came together to hash out the content and the focus of their chapters. Drafting and revisions were intensive up until the summer, when chapters were handed off to our external reviewers, Michelle Coleman and Marty McKee. Their comments were taken on board to the best of authors' abilities, and then the chapters uh, were handed off to, uh, again, to unshared to, by several other rounds of comments, including from our commission partners at DigiSanco, Digi Research, RTD, the Joint Research Center, the European Agency for Health and Consumers. All of this, as you can imagine, was quite intense. However, the final product is one we can be truly proud of. And uh, I would like to briefly describe some of the topics chosen by the work packages for inclusion in the book. I'm not preempting the next session where the work packages are going to be summarized, just a sample of what was done within the book. 
Wendy Yerd led the chapter on cancer prevention uh, and health promotion, discussing the European Cancer League's work to rejuvenate the European Week Against Cancer. Using novel methods of youth outreach, including flash mobs in public squares in Brussels and Rome, and a poster competition to tap into the creativity of young people, and here you see the winning entry from 2012. The European Council Leagues succeeded in jump-starting a European initiative that had been allowed to languish since the end of the European Against Cancer program. Then Matic Meglit, with the assistance of Alice Lamut and, and colleagues, led the next chapter discussing strategies for bringing cancer prevention to new audiences through social media, something which is extremely important nowadays. The dissemination team not only established an impact identity through the most common channels, but it also went a step further, using gamification and celebrity branding to apply commercial marketing strategies to the sphere of cancer prevention. Screening and healthcare were next topics. Akti Antila and Lawrence von Karsa described their leadership of a pilot course for European School of Screening Management, including the development of a common core curriculum with experts from all over Europe. The course was designed to have a ripple effect throughout Europe and beyond, and training decision makers and screening program managers to improve or set up equitable, appropriate population-based cancer screening in their countries. Josep Bras and his co-authors, on the other hand, explored European healthcare networks as an approach that could bring added value to cancer control, particularly in the field of rare diseases. Although healthcare is formally a competency of member states, clinicians and researchers are crossing borders to learn from and teach their counterparts with clear benefits for patients. The dilemma of how to set up a shared system for cancer information was also tackled head on by Milena Sant and her colleagues, who mapped the availability of cancer related information and examined the uh, the, uh, what is holding us back in this important initiative. The next steps were delineated through a roadmap that can be implemented by member states and the European Commission with the cooperation of information providers. Then the cancer research panorama was also explored for opportunities to increase collaboration and coordination of funding. Julio Celis and his colleagues at ECHO led uh, their partners in an analysis of the best areas to pursue coordination with three promising pilot projects in the areas of early phase clinical research in, in personalized medicine, cancer outcomes research, and a potential knowledge hub for cancer epidemiology and public health. Finally, one of the key leaders and friends of this joint action, Tit Albrecht, led the work on national cancer plans, national cancer control programs, describing how member states work together with the crucial support of the core working group to meet the Commission's challenge in developing an NCCP in every country in the European Union. This goal was deemed impossible back in 2009 with the Commission's communications on cancer control, but through joint commitment and proactive support by the Commission, by all the member states, most countries are now within reach. And even now, work continues on developing guidelines for quality national cancer plans in Europe. So, IPAC represented a strong push forward in many areas of European cancer control. And I think that this book reflects that. However, our work is obviously not fully completed. This initiative was really short, but cancer will continue to affect European populations far into the future, as it was wisely expressed by our distinguished 
and members of uh, the plenary session. The book shows how European action can jumpstart progress, but it is also show why it is so necessary to continue our work. Here we have a small sample of what we can do together and a strong call for action to carry on making cancer a public health priority. This is the family photo taken in Brussels. The quality is not very high, but it was a very friendly photo. <laughs> a family photo taken in Brussels back on the 22nd of January of this year, at the end of our author's workshop. At that time, let me share with you, at that moment, having this book in time seemed a quasi-impossible challenge. Now we are extremely happy to see that the dream has been transformed into reality, and here it is, look. So, my deep gratitude to all of you for listening and for, uh, and most especially to the work package leaders, co-authors, reviewers, partners, and all of the colleagues whose hard work went into preparing this volume. We hope this is useful for cancer patients and for all citizens who have the noble dream of really progressing in cancer prevention and control in Europe. Juan Alepo, thank you very much.